What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, going to be bringing you the last game from the Nexon Invitational Super Match. It's about time, right? As promised, this is going to go up, I think, actually the same day. So, yeah. I guess, never mind then. <laughs> Alright, so it's going to be between Virtus Pro on the Radiant, Tong Fu China, who have already played a, lot, a couple of games in Korea, while I guess they were chilling and waiting for VP to arrive. I don't know what went on with that, but... VP are finally here, and now we're going to be seeing the match with the two more experienced teams from this uh, this week's block, Tongfu, as well as Virtus Pro. Uh, well, we saw them play a little bit in the other games. Tongfu uh, really showing dominance over Startail. Both teams showing dominance over Startail. It wasn't really that hard for either team. But Tongfu more with a careful, methodical approach. Their, their uh, uh, I guess, third game versus Startail was a very slow roll game. They just took their time with their objectives and then they eventually crushed them but it was very slow whereas Virtus Pro they were more like we're gonna just Virtus you know Pro smash our fists bad. into their face and that's how we're gonna win the game and hey it worked so we'll see how these two teams stack up against each other VP picking up Clockwork as well as Crystal Maiden Clockwork we've been seeing a lot as the first pick roll uh, due somewhat to the point seven nine metagame of the uh, not as many tri lanes Clockwork Five when he's up against, three. you know, only two heroes, or hell, even sometimes three heroes, he's still a very functional hero, but when you face him in a... when you, he's up against one or two heroes, he gets just so much better, and that is happening more and more, and with Tong Fu picking up a Chen, you would think that the Clockwork would Dia receive a, at, at the very worst for him, a dual lane, so Clockwork is a very strong hero in the current meta, he's very, very often first picked, and then we see them, uh, we see DK pick up Clockwork first pretty much, like, all the time, like, if, if you don't ban that out, that's Ten what Ice 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 is going to be playing, and I don't know if he enjoys it, but he has to learn to enjoy Five it. Seconds. Crystal Maiden as well, a very aggressive support, so we'll see what VP wants to do with the Crystal Maiden into someone else combo. They themselves have banned out the Mirana, which is some uh, hero that X bingo. Or I guess it's ZX bingo. I don't know, the E is capitalized, so I just saw X. But Bingo has been playing a very, very uh, solid Mirana in the previous game, so it would have been a good combination for VP. I think it would have been, I mean, they ran Mirana versus their game versus Startail. It would have been uh, something that they could have run pretty effectively, though I guess getting it out of the hands of Tong Fu and picking up the clock with Crystal Maiden uh, as first priority, it does kind of make sense. Remaining. Tong Fu, they're going to go open up their picks with Alchemist as well as the Chen. Exactly. Chen obviously going to be going into the jungle. We'll see if they want to go for a little bit more of a heavy pushing role, but they themselves have banned out the Venomancer, so the odds of that are fairly unlikely. They could still just go Nature's Prophet and then swarm the towers with creeps. VP would have the Rocket Flare and Crystal Nova to defend against that, but uh, it is an option available to Song Fu, but more than likely, they're going to have a Chen, you know, bust down one or two towers early on, and then just have him get the quick mech and then play that healer support role. Alchemist, I think Tong Fu might want to lane the Alchemist in the mid lane, depending on what VP you pick up, of course. Uh, it is likely that the Clockwork, or it is, I guess it is possible that the Clockwork is going to be played by God, Ten although seconds. it could also be played by Light of Heaven, so uh, really don't know what position the Clockwork is to be played in, but I think either way, Alchemist mid shouldn't be too bad. Usually you would say melee versus melee, Clockwork has the edge, but Alchemist with that acid has a lot more chip damage than the Clockwork, and the Clockwork is going to get out-sustained at that point. Invoke. Looks like Tong Fu, they're not going to have any sort of pushing, neither team really. Death Prophet as well as Pugna, two of the heaviest pushing heroes in the game, uh, being banned out from either side, so clearly both teams are not interested in doing anything like that. Tong Fu, they're going to pick up Invoker, it looks like we're going to be seeing the second game with Yafet's Invoker, last game... Uh, was he on top lane? I think he was on a side lane. I think he was, and it looked like a bat rider or something. I don't know. It was a couple weeks ago, or like two Ten weeks ago, something like that. Remaining. But Invoker got his farm, got a hand of Midas, got his Yules, and then Five crushed everyone on Star Tail. And I remember distinctly him using the uh, Cyclone into Sunstrike into Deafening Meteor Blast combination Five on Crystal team. Maiden. And VP have a Crystal Maiden, so it looks like Crystal Maiden, no matter what she does, cannot escape the wrath that is the Invoker. With Alchemist stun to set up, with possible secondary support hero stun to set up as well, Invoker should be fairly effective in that sun striking role if he does go for the Exhort build, which is, you know, generally the assumption built into an Invoker pickup at a pro level game. Now, if it's Invoker, is uh, pretty damn sick, so VP, they have their work cut out for them. They're going to go for the Ventral Spirit, so. 
two very, very aggressive supporters that actually scale pretty decently into the late game, especially with the Midas craze that's going on right now. Maybe not as much Crystal Maiden, but definitely Vengeful Spirit. One of, if not the best, late game support heroes, just because both of these skills, Wave of Terror as well as the Vengeance Aura, give you percentage-based bonuses. I guess this one gives you armor, which is you know kind of percenty. It is percenty. Uh, but flat armor. So both of these are very are percentage based, which means later in the game more effective. Nether swap also is just su such an incredible tool of bailing out your carry because in a late game situation, if your carry gets caught and killed, you're probably going to lose the game. But not when Ventral Spirit is on the field. Tongfu for the first fourth pick is going to pick up the Bounty Hunter. We've been seeing a little bit of the Bounty Hunter roaming around and you know mess with the jungler kind of thing. VP though have not picked up that hero, so I think. Bounty Hunter is probably just going to go towards lane and handle it himself. Wow, VP! Going to go with the Slardar. Some synergy there with the Vengeful Spirit. Lots of minus armor, and they're going to be able to tear through Tong Fu. I mean, Alchemist doesn't have the most armor in the game, and he has a lot of regeneration, but with no armor, that's going to really hurt, and you know, not to mention everyone else as well. The Amplified Damage will act as a natural counter to the Bounty Hunter's invisibility. Don't really think it's going to be too, too key in killing off the Bounty Hunter, but hey, you never know. Uh, they might just uh, buy one less Satchel of Dust because they do have Slardar on the field. And Slardar, uh, he's a very powerful hero under certain circumstances. Uh, if he has good support, if he get, gets a lot of good farm, then he'll be pretty effective. So VS and Crystal Man are going to have to do their best to ensure that Slardar gets a lot of experience, gets a lot of gold. The thing is, though, is that Slardar needs a lot of gold. Like, Alchemist is pretty effective with the, uh, you know, the Unstable Concoction Acid Spray combination. And, of course, he has the Natural Ramp that is that comes from the Grievous Greed. Slardar is just a hero that needs remaining. just more gold than anyone else. His Slytherin Crush, Virgin it has 200 Rose, damage, which is a below-average nuke. And consider it's also physical as well. I mean, it does have some synergy with Amplified Damage. But the physical dam nature of it means that early on, it doesn't really do that much. Uh... Wait, no, what the f what the hell am I saying? It, it does do, I mean, it does do damage. It's, you know, most people Five have less than 25% on their armor reduction, but on their armor percentage reduction, Reserved but it's still only 200 damage. So uh, the fact that a physical doesn't really help it at all, and bash is kind of the same Dio thing. Sprint, pick. the additional damage is very, very painful, and Slaughter usually doesn't have enough damage to actually kill someone very, very quickly if, if uh, once again, if he doesn't have his support heroes. So Slaughter is a hero that just needs a lot more time to ramp, so I think Slaughter is either going to have to go for a fast Hand of Midas, or going to have to go for a fast Blink. And both of those items, uh, in kind of different ways, Midas is more of a farming item, Blink more of an aggressive item, but either way it will help Slaughter to get more Ten out of the map. Remaining. Whether it's from you know transmuting creeps or killing off heroes. And Tong Fu, going to pick up a Templar Assassin into the Slaughter. I actually don't mind this pickup too much. You would s normally think that, hey, you have meld, and Slardar has amplified damage. It's a natural counter, which it kind of is. Like, she can't meld out and hide once she's uh, amplified up, but really, this doesn't really matter too much. Like, the situations where that actually comes into play, they're fairly infrequent. Templar Assassin does have their fraction, and VP, their Ten damage is really fairly bursty. I guess with the exception of Frostbite, possibly with the exception of Battery Assault, Five but Vengeful Spirit, remaining. Slardar, they're going to have a tough time getting through that refraction. Uh, but with the final Templar Assassin pick from Reserve Tong Fu, time. it's going to push the Alchemist into more of a supporting role. So we might be uh, seeing a roaming Alchemist. Uh, Tong Fu, they're going to just need a lot of levels on the Templar Assassin. They're going to need a good 10-15 minutes before they really get going, unless they get some weird 10 timing pushes down. But uh, Bounty Hunter needs his level 6, Templar Assassin needs her level 6, and you know, a couple of, couple of creep kills for her Blink Dagger, as well Invoker needs many levels he can get. So Tong Fu, they're going to play the patient game. They have a lot of scaling heroes and you know, Templar Assassin, Invoker, uh, Alchemist, who's probably not going to scale as hard, but he could always fulfill that role. And then Bounty Hunter accelerating everyone out in track. So Tong Fu going to play it most likely fairly patiently in the early stage, and then be super aggressive later on. Whereas VP, they're gearing up for, wow, turbo aggression. They're going to go for the Viper pick again. And, wait, was it again? Yeah, again. Was it a... Did I... Hmm. Yes, yeah, they picked it up, right? I think so. My memory sucks. Like, it's horrible. Well, they're going to go for a Viper. The Viper will be helped out quite a bit from the minus armor that's going to come out from Blow Your Brain Slardar, as well as Arzard's Vengeful Spirit's Wave of Terror. 
you know, this nether toxin is just going to do that much more damage to everyone. Yeah, but more importantly, it's a hero that could really turn up the pressure in the lane very, very early on. It'll burn through the refraction charges, the poison attacks, uh, so Templar Assassin is going to be struggling against the uh, G's Viper if, of course, that is the lane matchup. So VP, you can really feel it in their draft. They're going to want to look to be aggressive. Even though Slardar, not necessarily the best hero to be super aggressive from the get-go, it is more than enough to you know get a kill or two when you have Vengeful Spirit, as well as Crystal Maiden backing you up. So Tong Fu, they're going to have to weather the storm, and then later on, it'll be a little bit more of an even fight. And uh, especially if Tong Fu can get some even trades from this bounty hunter, get some track gold up, and if they break even with track, then that's pretty much a win for them. So let's go over the rest of the heroes from VP. Ready went over all those guys. NS is going to be the last supporting hero from VP, playing that Crystal Maiden. We have yeah, Viper on the mid lane, and Light of Heaven is going to be playing the Clockwork, going up top. On the Tongfu side, we have Kabu supporting as the Alchemist, Long DD also supporting as the Chen. X Bingo, or ZX Bingo, is going to be on the Bounty Hunter. Looks like he's heading towards the bottom lane. Picked up Boots very early, picked up three shared tangos. So his objective is pretty much going to be mess with the supports as much as you can possibly can. That's where the boots come in. Mikasa is going to be on the Templar Assassin. That leaves, of course, Yafit's on his Invoker once again. We'll see how this guy performs. His last game against Startail, he had an absolute field day with the enemy team. And, uh, well, VP, they're definitely a much tougher opponent than Startail, but uh, still, it should be pretty exciting. Mid lane, I already talked about a little bit about this matchup. Mikasa should have a little bit of difficulty. G, I think last time took the Nether Toxin as his first level, but you can see this matchup definitely just going to go for the poison attack. Mikasa needs a little bit more range before she could actually be uh, truly effective in this lane, but you know, G is going to begin the harassment, and Mikasa getting hit very, very hard from very, very early on with only two tangos. She, she's going to have to weather the storm, and uh, it won't be too bad for her because, you know, of course, she didn't spend any money on regeneration herself, which means she won't, uh, she'll have a very, very fast bottle, but G, not really letting up. The mana is uh, quickly depleting for the Templar Assassin, whereas G, keeping his pretty damn high, and Mikasa getting chipped down in a big way. This lane for Templar Assassin is not going to be fun, but really, when you pit are up against a Viper, there are a few lanes that I would consider fun. Top lane, it is going to be Yafet's handling the Invoker. Pretty much 1v1 versus Light of Heaven. He's going to have Kabu in the area, possibly threatening an unstable concoction. Uh, but they're going to need a pretty good chain stun of, or I guess chain combination of unstable concoction into an immediate sunstrike to even have a dream of getting the kill. Clockwork at the Cogs should keep himself relatively safe against this combination of heroes. So I don't expect Clockwork to die until Chen rotates around, and Chen probably isn't going to be uh, too focused on doing that. He probably just wants to get as far, maybe stack a couple of camps, uh, maybe not, and try to get a fast mech up, because really, top lane Clockwork kill, it's possible, yes, but it is fairly unlikely. And same thing on the bottom lane, X-Bingo isn't going to be getting any kills anytime soon. Like, blow your brain as well. Uh, oh, wait, uh, mid lane. G gonna go toe-toe -to with Mikasa. I saw Blow Your Brain sprint, but then I also saw friggin' R's art just walk away, so a little bit of miscommunication, perhaps, but uh, Blow Your Brain is gonna have a fairly easy time versus Bounty Hunter, though Bounty Hunter just having a 1v1 matchup is pretty much guaranteed to win the lane if he doesn't die. He's gonna get the track faster, and then he can even stick around in the lane. If Bounty Hunter gets amplified, that uh, might put him in a little bit of a danger zone, but really, he'll have the flexibility to get that quick level 6 and even get a couple more levels just because he's not being aggressively forced out of the lane by two support heroes. NS roamed all the way to the top lane to no avail, and, uh, well, Arzart did a little bit of something in this area. Not much of anything, really. So Bounty Hunter already level 3, whereas we have Whereas we see Light of Heaven not yet breaching that level 3 mark, although he will get there relatively shortly. As predicted, this is going to be a relatively tame start. VP probably will look for a couple kills on the bottom lane once Crystal Maiden gets a couple more levels. Their pushing on this bottom lane isn't really there at all. They can't really push VP. Uh, once again, they're going to go for a very pick-off heavy... Uh, they're going to go for a very pick-off focused uh, strategy right now. And it won't really benefit them too much until they can actually get these levels up. X-Bingo going to try to mess with NS just a little bit. Unfortunately, he came a little bit too late to actually mess with the Crystal Maiden. And <laughs> Crystal Maiden going to give him the old wraparound. Just walk right around him when he's invisible. That's a good solution. Mikasa finally has his bottle coming out. G actually getting hit pretty hard by those side blades. Mikasa only 9 for 2, whereas G 
pretty much doubling up the creep score of the Templar Assassin. Really, though, that's to be expected. The damage from Templar Assassin is high, but the chip damage coming uh, coming out from this Viper is just is just so much higher than the durability of the Templar Assassin. So, Templar Assassin might even be in a little bit of trouble. NS in the area. There's no uphill vision uh, for for Tong Fu. So, once the nighttime phase drops in five seconds. Then NS going to be pretty effective versus the Templar Assassin, though. It looks like TA going to run straight into Arzart, and it's going to be a 1v1 battle. Here comes Wave of Terror. You're going to have to burn through those refraction charges before they want, actually want to throw a nuke. Mikasa will make it to the cover of the trees, so he will be fine. Refraction saving his life for sure right there, though G might not be as lucky. X Bingo still in the area, not really getting much done at all. He's usually, when you see bounty hunters roaming around, they're going to be messing with people, just like a poke there, a you know, poke here, poke there, maybe messing with a creep pull just a little bit, but at the same time getting their, his experience. He hasn't gotten pretty much any experience, whereas we see Light of Heaven, the uh, rather the kind of opposite here on the other end, has been getting experience. So, temple. X Bingo taking a little bit of an excursion to the mid lane, and he didn't get anything done. He just chilled right here. It's a little bit unlucky that he didn't run into Arzar and NS farming, but, you know, he attack. actually just wasted all of that time. He literally did nothing except stand around. Which is, of course, less than ideal. Top lane, Yafits. He's packing that gloves with haste. I don't expect to see anything but a hand of Midas coming out from this guy. Invoker more than anyone else, and already, like, in Midas is the item to get in this version. So, if you get here that benefits even more with it, then why the hell not? Long GD, pretty weak in the jungle, though. He does have a Centaur. Looks like they're going to make a little bit of, of push on this lane. It's going to be very difficult. If they could catch the Clockwork with a Frost Wall as well as a Cold Snap, they might be able to get him, but it's going to put Long DD at a risk. Oh, no, never mind. He has a self. It's actually going to be Arzart as well as NS looking to wrap around on Mikasa. If G catches him with a Viper Strike, Mikasa is dead. Here we go. Dust going to fly, and they can't catch up to him. G going to land a Poison Attack, and that's it. But we have reinforcements coming in from Tong Fu. Potion is going to get thrown onto G. Sun Strike as well. This is going to be the death of the Viper. It's going to be Chen of all people grabbing that first blood. Sunstrike, unfortunately, a little bit too late, so no kill or assist from the Invoker. But G, very, very soft hero of that Viper. And again, when people ask, when noobs ask, how do we do with Viper in lane, you just go kill him. You just gank him. X Bingo, they're getting a little bit too close to Arzard as well as NS. No Magic Missile, though. Oh, Magic Missile was casted, however. Was that a layered stun? I think it was. Well, they derped up the Disable, and X Bingo gonna walk away from that alive. Does have a bottle, though, so he can mess with those heroes all day long. And just try to get a little bit of something, possibly pick off if he's incredibly lucky. Although, more than likely not. He's instead probably gonna join up with Kabu and Long DD. Now gonna go into the enemy jungle. Ars Art, not exactly in the safest of places, but it's actually going to be Blur Brain, who's in truly in danger. There's a Hellbear, there's a Centaur, there's more than enough stun to kill this... Slardar, especially if he pops off Sprint beforehand. x going to open it up. Unfortunately, he's not level 6 just yet. There's a stun as well as the Acid Centaur, as well as Hellbear. Going to get the claps off and blow your brain. No time to even crush. He's going to get nuked down by the Chen. That's two kills for Tong Fu. And blow your brain receiving no support from his team there. It was way too far out to have any Dream of support. And Mikasa even going to be joining this party as well. Arzart thinks he's safe, but he is in so much trouble right now. They could dive this Vengeful Spirit so easily. And I think that's probably what's going to happen. Oh, they don't, well, they probably don't even need to. Here's the trap for Mikasa, gonna put up the refraction, hit, hit, meld, hit, and then Arzard is pretty much dead. Sh Potion is gonna get shaken up by the Alchemist, and it's gonna crush the Vengeful Spirit with one meld hit from Mikasa helping in that as well. Once again, the Sun Strike from Invoker, a little late, but I'm pretty sure if the Vengeful Spirit didn't die to that, that would have been just right on the money, like perfectly in time with the Alchemist done. So the Sun Strike, though it technically missed, it pretty much hit. That's going to be an easy kill going for Tong Fu. Uh, VP, they're not going to defend their bottom lane tower. Chen, as well as Kabu, them, just the two of them, are probably more than capable enough to take that tower. Mikasa now in a lot of trouble. There's the uh, amplified damage, so no meld escape from Mikasa. They don't have a true sight, uh, no true sight items, rather. Blow your brain, G. And a god going to fly through, but it's not nearly going to be enough to save this Templar Assassin. So VP finally take a kill of their own, but at, that's at the cost of a tier 1 tower. They're going to try to take a tier 1 tower of their own, but they're going to have to be careful. If they get hit by an unstable concoction, you can bet the Sunstrike is going to come from this top lane. The office has been uh, pretty pretty diligent about dropping those Sunstrikes when action has been happening, and I don't really see that changing anytime soon. 
Now the tower has been pushed, Blurry Brain can return to that lane, try to get a little bit more farm going. He has power treads, 800 gold, magic stick as well. Gold per minute, 347. It's not too bad, but really net worth, uh, he's going to be falling behind unless he starts getting kills. X Bingo, going to get locked down by the Crystal Nova, and that's going to be it. Just right clicks, right clicks, right clicks from the Viper. Max out that Nether Toxin. I thought the poison attack was kind of light, but only level 2, that's why Nether Toxin really just doing the damage on that Bounty Hunter and VP get a meal for free. Do they even use dust? Uh, yeah, I think they must have. Okay. Memory sucks, guys, I know. Holy crap. Anyway, G getting his farm as well. Two kills to his name. Power Treads. Gonna just tank up. Don't ex... Uh, well, yeah, he's probably gonna go for the mech as well. Light of Heaven hasn't really been getting the best of farm on the top lane though. 31 CS, definitely not too shabby. At least a lot less, uh, a lot less shabbier. Does that make sense? Less shabbier? I don't even know if that makes sense. Uh, doing much, much better than X Bingo, who, to his credit, does have track. So now he's going to look to recoup the fact that he has only nine CS. He could very, very easily make up that deficit with one or two track kills, and we'll see if he could find a couple on the map. Going to the top lane though, that's not where he's going to find them. VP is going to continue to get their farm up on a couple of their heroes. Blair Brain, I think he should be going for a Blink Dagger right now. The initiation from VP isn't that intense. The Vengeful Spirit, only level 3, doesn't even have a swap yet. So you can't really rely on anything except for, you know, a stray Viper Strike or Poison Attack to actually start fights. Or, you know, a Bounty Hunter who doesn't have any uphill vision. That works too. Top tower but I think attack. just Blink Crush is probably going to be the best way for VP to actually open up some initiation, although they do have the Clockwork, who is uh, hasn't really initiated on anything just yet. If he does throw himself into an initiation, though, it's probably not going to end too well. Like, yeah, he'll get one person in the cogs, but then you just put a cage up so that Yafits can drop a Sunstrike Meteor on your ass. So, Light of Heaven, if he jumps in first, he's going to die first very, very quickly. As far as fights go, they're going to have to rely on someone else to really get that big initiation off. Or just, you know, react to Tong Fu's initiation, which isn't too bad either. We'll keep an eye, our eye on Light of Heaven. He's abandoned the top lane. That is going to mean that Tong Fu could easily bulldoze that one. And it looks like Tong Fu ne next going to turn their attention towards the mid lane. The Acid Spray is level 2 on this Alchemist, and the Chen Creeps, a couple of them at least, are going to join the fight as well. This tower is going to be pressured pretty heavily, and VP... Clockworks in the area, Crystal Ma Maidens in the area. He's gonna try to draw the aggro off the tower, but with so many Chen Creeps, this tower is gonna take a beating. Max out Rocket Flare gonna help in a big way. Even a troll going down. That was actually a kind of an odd miss micro from Long DD. You usually can keep those trolls attack. alive, or any creeps alive when you're pushing a tower like this. It may or may not matter though. Tower is getting chipped down. Hero is gonna chip down as well, but really there's not enough reaction from VP. There's only three heroes here, and that's definitely not enough. Tower's gonna drop, and that is not gonna be met with any trades at all. Arzart trying to get levels on the spot on the top lane. Blow your brain, slowly farming. You actually got a vanguard on this bottom lane. Uh, it does make sense. Tong Fu, do they do have a lot of physical damage. The Templar Assassin, the Alchemist, the Bounty Hunter. Uh, to a lesser extent, the Invoker, though, you know, with level 4 Exhort, he will be doing a lot of right-click damage as well. So it does make sense, but it is a rather defensive item, and VP, they're not playing as aggressively as I really thought. The Gang Squad of Art's Art, as well as the Crystal Maiden uh, NS, they've been smoking around a couple of times that really has been met with utter failure pretty much every single time, and Tong Fu, they're really the ones putting the pressure onto VP just because they're refusing to defend any of their towers. Whereas I think they actually could. There's Hookshot in though. Onto Yafits. Sunstrike Meteor is going to land on Light of Heaven. Will this be enough to kill him off? It looks like it will. Yafits will burn down the clockwork. He's going to get it after the fact though. Arzart going to run away. Get it. Get tracked up. X Bingo going to run straight into a freezing field. He will make it out alive. NS going to continue to channel that. But from the back, we have Kabu already in his ultimate form. Throwing that potion. It's going to be a 1 for 3 trade in favor of Tong Fu and VP. Uh, aggression, maybe a little bit too much. Unfortunately, the Freezing Field was not enough to kill off that Bounty Hunter, though it looked like it really should have. I mean, you stun him in the Freezing Field, he should be dead, especially when he walks around the corner into it. Uh, but Yafits, he does a lot of damage. It's uh, not really any secret that an Invoker with 4 points in Exhort... I mean, he's, he's level 8, he only has 4 points in Exhort. Usually you see a, uh, one more, at least level 9 now, so usually it would be, I guess, one more. Now now it's, right, the damage that he does. But he blew up that Clockwork so easily. As I said before, if Clockwork jumps in, he puts up a cage where he says, hey, Invoker, see these giant cogs? 
Just put the Sun Strike right in the middle, and I'm gonna die. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately for Yafis, he got the kill after he died, so no experience for him. But hey, a kill is a kill, especially if you uh, get it when you shouldn't have gotten a kill in the first place. Blow your brain in the area as as Tong Fu try to take out Roshan with the Chen Creeps tanking up. They did bring it down pretty damn quickly. They do have the melds as well as the Acid Medallion on the Alchemist. There's actually a lot of Roshan killing potential on both sides. Blow your brain with the uh, amplified damage, and they do have the Wave of Terror, only level 1, but it will increase in levels eventually. And then Tong Fu with Yafit's Invoker's, uh, his uh, Forge Spirits, Kabu as I said before, his stuff, as well as Chen Creep's Tank, and TA Meld. Blair Brain already sprinted up. He might actually regret this in a little bit. He's very, very fast, but they need someone to initiate in Light of Heaven. I don't really think he wants to do that. That's probably a bad idea. That's how you get killed. Initiating uphill like that, so... The Roshan is going to be stalled a little bit. Big smoke up, though, from Tong Fu. They still want to fight. The potion's being shaken. Blow Your Brain is going to get stunned. Can they follow this up? Where's the Sun Strike? There it is. Meteor as well. Deafening Blast hitting onto two. Blow Your Brain is going to survive at just a little bit of HP. Light of Heaven is going to drop the cogs in the middle of the fight. Tong Fu cannot close the distance on anyone. Mikasa is going to drop it to one for one trade so far. X Bingo on his way out. He's going to get a track on the Crystal Maiden and the kill as well before he dies. Kabu is going to come in with a stun once again. Almost fully charged onto G. Blow Your Brain still very weak. Arzar going to get caught in that ice wall he's gonna go down as well it's a one for three again i think for tong fu blow your brain that vanguard saving his ass in a big way i mean he got hit by a sun strike meteor deafening blast combo when he walked away from that not many heroes can do that he's gonna live but at what cost right they got mikasa the cogs were pretty good from vp like tong fu they couldn't get close to the anyone on vp but vp they were they were at that point already a man down and Clockwork in the Cogs, level 2 Battery Assault, isn't really a huge threat. He's going to put up the Cogs, he's going to be you know, poking at you a little bit, but the damage isn't really going to be there. Really, it's up to G at that point to do all of the damage, because Slardar, he's not going to be doing any. He's like 200 HP left. What could he really do? So even though Tong Fu couldn't really get in and decisively deal all their damage, VP, they didn't have any damage decisively deal at all. So that fight is going to go once again into Tong Fu's favor. And VP... I think they just need to get a couple more single kill tra uh, single pick off. They just have to get a couple more single picks off if they uh, want to take these fights a little bit more successfully. And having initiation onto the Slardar, I guess, didn't lead to a kill, which is ideal, but at the same time, it's uh, less than ideal because now Yafitz, he had his Yule Scepter in the last fight, and he'll be able to now burst down people 100 to 0. Uh, maybe with the exception of Slardar, possibly Viper with of skin, but anyone else on VP, they're pretty much just food for Yafits if he catches them alone. So Tong Fu, they're gonna get the Aegis, put it onto the Invoker, and now they're gonna go for a push in the bottom lane. VP go. looking to make it a one for one trade at the very worst. They're gonna get this tower, unless everyone from Tong Fu teleports like right now. But Tong Fu, they're pushing the tier two, and Dyer's I think they're gonna be okay top. with pressuring VP back in this way. Because if they start a fight again, VP. Uh, they're probably not going to win it. Tongfu, they just have so much minus armor, so much AoE. Top tower they, of course, fallen. do have the mech and the uh, Hand of God from Chen, Radiant's whereas VP, uh, they're top. nowhere near that item on anyone. So it's going to be a tier Radiant 1 for a tier 2 for now. Fortification going to slow Tongfu down. VP, they're trying to get as much as they can from this, and I do like Dyer's this decision just because they're under, pretty top. far behind. So if you get even-ish trades, or you know, they're actually going to get a beneficial fallen. trade unless Tongfu come right now. But they're not pushing fast enough. As, as I said before, VP, they're a very, very hero-focused, uh, hero-killing-focused team. And Tong Fu, they're not going to stop for anyone. Traps are going to fly, and now this tower, already the Tier 3, taking some heat. Yafits already does have the Yule Scepter combo lined up. You can see Meteor as well as Sunstrike ready for him to cast. Chen Creep's going to get whittled down just a little bit. Swap onto Kabu, though. He's going to pop his ultimate immediately, as well as the stun. There's the crush, but Slardar is going to not be able to seal the deal on that one. Templar Assassin going to kill off Ventral Spirit. Now going to work towards Light Heaven Mikasa. Taking a lot of damage, though. Will go down. G popping the BKB in the middle of this one, but it's a 1 for 2 trade in favor of Tong Fu. And they still... Well, they don't have their cooldowns on Invoker, so they're forced to back off for now. But Kabu... Tanky enough to survive all that from VP, and he also did get four stats out, I believe, from Long DD. Yeah. And VP, you can see Slardar really just struggling to get into the middle of his fights. Cogs, although they're a great spell, I don't. This is actually like some anti-synergy or negative synergy, however you want to call it. 
between Slaughter and Clockwork, especially when the Slaughter is rushing a BKB and not going for a Blink Dagger. Those cogs are very, very annoying for Blow Your Brain to deal with. He's going to have to run all the way around them, and he has a Sprint, yes, but Sprint is a... Uh, it's not really going to be fantastic when you have invokers dropping meteors and you're walking through acid spray just to walk around the cogs your ally put up. So VP, once again, take not the best trade in the world. They're going to smoke up and try to look for a pick, though there's no one in this bottom lane, like, at all. Blair Brain, as well as God, both going for BKBs. That is uh, going to help them to some respect, but as I mentioned before, there's so much physical minus armor stuff on the Tongfu side. The acid spray... Will will burn you down as as well as the uh, meld and invoker. Eventually, when he gets those forge spirits, he'll be doing some pretty heavy damage through the BKB as well. So the physical damage definitely there, but at the same time, VP they need these items. They need the BKB just so they don't get stunned, just so they don't get crushed by the meteor or the sun strike or all that other stuff that the invoker has. But then if they all go for BKBs, then where's the damage coming from? Really, VP, they're a damage light team. It's really going to be focused onto this Viper, who's going purely defensive. He has another Toxin, so he could still do some pretty heavy damage without going for a damage item. But uh, Slardar, with his amplified damage, is fantastic if he actually manages to hit people, which is fairly has been fairly infrequent this game. He hasn't been able to hit many people at all. It's going to be even more difficult for him to hit people with Yule Scepter, Four Staff on the offense, a Four Staff onto the Chen, and uh, lots of movement speed on Templar Assassin. Tong Fu, they saw the success of their previous bottom lane push, and hey, why not go for it again? Invoker still does have that Aegis, going to have it for a couple more minutes, one, two minutes more. Uh, one, two, three. It was like one minute, right? Yeah, they're going to have it for, they're going to have it for more than enough time to bring this uh, tier three tower down, or at least, you know, continuously pressure this. There we go, Acid gets dropped. Six minutes. This isn't always an eight-minute timer, right? So yeah, just gotta wait for the two minutes. I've kept on. I just like slipped my mind. It was like, was it a six-minute timer or was it an eight-minute timer? It's an eight-minute timer. I could count it, but I'm not gonna. Centaur, gonna drop. And Tongfu, they're gonna retreat just for a little bit. They do still have this Aegis. They do still want to use the Aegis. But VP, they're gonna hold on for just a little bit longer. I guess they want Long DD's Chen Army to be at full force. And Alpha Wolf isn't really going to be the best one for them. Especially when Yafitz kills it in like one hit. Jesus. Tong Fu, they're going to play it safe. We saw this coming out from them in their Star Tail game. They're going to do the exact same thing to VP. Because VP, they're really getting choked for gold. Choked for experience. They're, they're having a little bit of an upswing. But it's definitely not enough. As I said before, Slaughter is a hero that just needs more gold than other heroes. And he doesn't have any sort of ramp on him. No Hand of Midas, no Blink Dagger to be aggressive and went around this time. He's gone for the BKB, which is going to help, but he's really not going to do that much. G in a lot of trouble. The Offits, I think we're going to see the Invoker combination. There is a stun. G actually going to dodge it, but it also did damage, even though he had BKB up. That was interesting. It is physical, but it should have been... I guess if it's in the air, and then it's already targeted. I did not know of that mechanic. That's interesting. Usually you won't be able to target them, but it was in the air already, so I guess physical damage does go through. It does make sense, I guess. There we go. G, gonna drop for free on the bottom lane. And without their Viper, that's VP's main source of damage. Tong Fu, gonna take this opportunity to go straight up to the high ground. And now throw a stun onto Blurry Brain as well as NS. Are they gonna follow through on this? Nuking down NS very, very quickly. Unfortunately, not enough. Let's see if Yafitz wants to go for that Sun Strike Snipe. It's not gonna happen. NS is fine. Viper... Not yet alive, but the threat of amplified damage on everyone in Tong Fu is going to force them back once again. They're in no rush. They're getting a lot more out of the map than the VP side. And they even have uh, heroes that can make benef make actual use of it. I mean, Yafit's getting his levels up. He's going to get nothing but stronger for the next 13 levels. Kabu has picked up Grievel's Greed, level 1. He's going to go for Point of Chemical Rage at level 11, obviously, but he's going to ramp up as well, slowly but surely. And then everyone uh, else is going to benefit from, like, track goal and stuff like that. Mikasa getting focused down in pretty much all those other fights that we've seen between the two teams. It's always been Mikasa dying. But, uh, hell, it's all for the benefit of the team, right? Templar Assassin not really going to ramp up as hard as everyone else from Tong Fu because she's not getting the track gold and stuff like that. But that's, um, I'm pretty sure Tong Fu are completely okay with that. Maybe Mikasa's not okay with that. That sucks. But 23 minutes into the game, 
and VP struggling to find any sort of opportunity. I mean, they got in like one successful smoke gank that didn't result in like catastrophe, I think. It might have been zero, actually. Like, all credit to them. They have been smoke ganking. They've been trying pretty hard to be aggressive. To re supposed to be used. Kung Fu, the luck from VP, those smoke ganks. It's not really working out for them. They're going to try to... Very, very low. They're going to be able to kill it in like three hits with the Nether Toxin. But there are a couple heroes here from Tong Fu. Their initiation in the hands mainly of the Invoker. The Invoker is nowhere near this fight. Let's see if VP actually want to fight this. It looks like they really, really do. Though they don't have Ars Art. And this level 4 Magic Missile is a large source of damage from uh, for the VP side. If they go on to Kabu, he pops... He's just fine. Yeah, VP, they see no opportunity here. They're going to back off. So they're kind of burning through the effective stage of their heroes right now. I mean, VP ideally right now want to be using this uh, Amplify Damage swing from the Sardar to actually get ganks off. You know, just pick someone off and that, that just that's it. <laughs> just pick someone off and then farm more. Pick someone off, then farm more. And get further ahead that way. But it's instead... Tong Fu with their smokes that have been really, really effective. Like, they're going to pick off Blow Your Brain right here, unless he pops BKB. Not in time. Sunstrike, Meteor. Oh my god, that was so much overkill. Blow Your Brain is so very dead. He's like, not even a little dead. He's really dead. That's going to be for only 45 seconds, though, so I guess he's only a little dead. Back of that, they're going to go straight for the Roshan. Tong Fu going to keep up the pressure with the Metallion. With the meld hit, that's minus 11 armor from Roshan. Minus 17 when the acid gets dropped. Yeah, Roshan's not going to last very long at all. It's going to be this time Mikasa realizing, uh, Tongfu realizing that Mikasa's taking the brunt of everything. Just want to make that kind of a red herring for VP. Just lay him out as bait. It's like, hey, yeah, burn everything you have on the TA. Because while you're killing the TA, do the refraction and everything like that, our invoker is dropping spells. Like, they're serious sitting in the Acid Spray. You're taking a lot of damage from just focusing this Templar Assassin. Who's just going to come back alive in just a little bit, so. Tong Fu, they're going to use that Roshan, try to propel themselves up this high ground. VP have done a pretty good job at defending this, uh, maxing out the Rocket Flare, certainly helping in that regard, though. What the hell? Foker, what are you doing there, man? Uh, maxing out the battery, the Rocket Flare, definitely helping in that regard, though. It is a severe restriction on VP's uh, actual... Dyer's top tower is under attack. Incoming! It's doing a pretty good job at clearing creep waves. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Gonna catch three heroes as well as all the Chen creeps. Light of Heaven jumps in for a two man cog, but the Sunstrike Meteor combo and Light of Heaven gets absolutely flat and BKB's up on everyone. Blow your brain is gonna walk away from that. Chen buys back. Arzart though. Tower in danger as well. G gonna get stunned up in the ice wall. He has no escape. NS gonna get netted down by the troll warlord, controlled by Chemikasa. Wants this kill, but here we go. VP once again. Blow your brain. Gonna get a three-man stun. There's the Aegis pops. Yafit's running out of cooldowns very, very quickly. There's a tornado. That was the shortest tornado I've ever seen in my life. Mikasa now gonna get frostbitten up. He's gonna go down again. Is gonna be consistent enough so that. Tong Fu overextending just a little bit too much. Sunstrike. Arzart and NS and Bingo is not going to be able to escape either. Tong Fu. Them. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And ignorance take you all. Just God in the back lines. Just Arzart 
Sarah was still alive and healing. So. it with flair. It's up. Invisibility! And it's off! Homing in! I 
Rock it on! Regeneration! Coming in! it with flair. Here. Invisibility. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is under attack. My thanks. Sean has fallen to the dire. It just keeps getting better. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Boom, there it goes. Truth is all around you. But it hides from the unworthy. Repent. <laughs> 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 
Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Boom! There it goes! Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Double damage! Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower has been denied.
Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified.